beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed No longer the place of desire. No longer the place of ambition. That you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable. Your impact is significant. The last definition of the word destiny. Destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah dr miles munro of blessed memory a man who has changed my life so much i honor him in life and in death he said this he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death the greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose a life without a meaning a life without a reason for living that you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living there are so many people angry and frustrated in life listen please we attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things we try education and then you know after many years of laborious study we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice we try marriage and for many people is hell they are living in hell literally we try money we try several things in an attempt to get to that place but it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction and many people in Nigeria in their old age are full of regrets, are full of pain, anointed people inclusive. So tonight I want to challenge us. There's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people. Listen please. Living a life of purpose and a life of meaning. Your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny. Your need for financial prosperity. Your need for a wife or a husband. Your need for children. Your need for influence is absolutely useless. If you do not understand God's idea of destiny. Say there is a place for me in life. I want you to shout it with conviction. Listen, there is no man 
born of a woman i know you've heard it but listen to it with an anointing on it there is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth dr miles Munro said they may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a sociocultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality in fact it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime you can justify your pain by saying i never had an opportunity to know but then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life and then you never get to live it are we together there is no one sent here on earth by mistake you just arrive and then you say lord why am i here and god will say ah sorry oh, let's check why is he here exactly no 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 no. we can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives we can reject god's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves but anyone who will find fulfillment especially in this end time they are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom listen you are not here to create a program for yourself you are here to walk in a program that has been predestined are we together Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5. He was speaking to a little boy called Jeremiah. Revealing to him his prophetic destiny. This was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet. To speak the purposes of God over nations. And here he was having an encounter with the Lord. And then he was receiving a download of the blueprint. What he would live for. What he would die for. And here's what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking god's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the bible called elisha and the bible tells us that elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life working with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span earmarked for you will look too short 
the, a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman are we together now everyone has a destiny in Christ Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 Jesus who was a portrait of our life the firstborn among the many brethren in the similitude of our life said this said lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will oh God lo I come this is why I came when Jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in Luke chapter 4 the Bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah the prophecy that Isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the Lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um, well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um, the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they would be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them ha ah, hey, jimmy Abba, you mean you you are you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do i do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my birthday said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it 
is God speaking to us I want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together I like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say Lord any price for my destiny I receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny Lord I'm tired of living my life carelessly I'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as I listen to your word now Lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh God for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying Lord there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from there is no price that is too great make sure you are praying don't be careless tonight you are about to hear something that will change your life some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now God is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make Lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your god-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with jesus a genuine encounter with jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus John 7 when you read John 7 John 3 I'm sorry verse 7 actually it's 3 to 7 John chapter 3 the encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus now understand this the context of that scripture is very interesting because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law Nicodemus was a doctor he was a philosopher he was intelligent he was a graduate he was even employed Nicodemus was not a small man he was a man of influence but every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting Jesus castigating Jesus but they were secret fears and frustration Nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to Jesus and then he says Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him and then Jesus said verily verily I say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of God now he, he begins to talk how can I be born again will I enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um, you know verily verily I say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then Jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where I'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that i say unto you ye must be born again it didn't say ye may it didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice 
are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with God but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of God they want to have Christian names being born again is more than just confessing Jesus being born again is prioritizing God that God becomes your obsession your priority and your motivation there's no hope of leaving him as born again because he, he he explained it he said you must be born of two things the water and the spirit the water there represents the ministry of the word the cleansing power of the word an encounter with the holy ghost being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material a point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together dear you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he's practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an arm robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following Jesus said I am the door I am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then I will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now An encounter with Jesus when you encounter Jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of God it is the effect of an encounter when Saul of Tarsus in the book of Acts had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the Bible Zacchaeus when Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus what happened it changed his life forever Zacchaeus just come down I'm going to your house at once Zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion it changed 
there were other people i believe that jesus met that were not recorded in the bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was joseph of arimathea i believe he was a great man and because he was caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love god on campus or love god before marriage i have seen many people who used to love god on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we serve god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so i i sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir he said ye who have continued with me not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say lord i'm with you forever i'm with you forever i'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray i need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you ah jesus jesus how i trust you how i prove the oracle jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to, to trust you. lift your voice and say lord what shall separate me from your love not famine uh -uh. not cgpa not recession i am with you and i'm with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision i have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything lord i know that i may be angry if i don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation it's a salt covenant it's a fraternity with you in life and in death i pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength with all i am i will see of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter 
don't tell me you are a Christian father are you hearing what I'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why I love our little ones in koinonia you may think they are not understanding what we are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but Jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with a house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with Jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as I'm blasting tongues I want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you, you don't stay under my roof I'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve Jesus I assure you please take what I'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us Jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted Ah, hallelujah you've heard me say it again and again when a lady brings a gentleman a lady brings a gentleman to her parents they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God let me tell you in one minute I can know whether you are born again or not even if you wear suit ha -ha. this is a culture this is a culture are we together so we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom we give our sons to wicked women who are anti-christ and we this this combination produces nonsense that's what is destroying our, our generation now what we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love God no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya. you are prophesying what are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will. Everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an armed robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society to an extent to an extent that if you are godly they look at you as if something is wrong with your life you have to explain godliness something that should be institutionalized go outside of Zaria and see a young lady if a young lady likes a guy do you know how she attracts him she starts singing bad and nonsense song thinking that's what he likes are you getting the point now so you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted brother shout no way Abba. Abba. after reading Proverbs 31 uh -uh. ladies you too shout no way don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody do you have an encounter with Jesus listen don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen, 
if you are here in koinonia if you are truly under this grace you should have submitted to our way of doing things so when you see somebody who is under this grace you know at once the way you talk the things you do your passion for god you can easily know someone who just came to koinonia for the first time sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and i see the reaction in people it's like no 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 this is anti koinonia culture i can see it in you so why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again born again is like an id card you can see it is visible okay this 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 thing this thing is i'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah we cancel it in jesus name i'm not asking you you will see what will happen from the prophecy because some of you are insisting i cancel it in the name of jesus christ destroy your life in the name of love love is not stupidity are we together if you have had an encounter with jesus you must have the value system of the kingdom somebody comes to your house everything he's saying is nonsense every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one is your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe god into fulfilling destiny it has to be his way everybody say an encounter with jesus now lift your voice and pray and say lord anything trying to prove in my life that i've not had an encounter drive it drive it far drive it far drive it far some of you need to make some calls to certain people call that gentleman and tell him i love you but apostle just preached a message i can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time i've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that some of us who are about to get married some of us who have children it's time to get back bring the cross to your house bring christian values to your house don't live a life that is vulgar don't raise children that are wayward in discipline no sir no sir hallelujah listen listen you see these are the things that should be discussed in church i'm telling you this are we together yeah how many elders are not born again we just array the names of people when did this one join our church 1991 when did this one join our church 98 if we give this person and don't give this he'll be angry well let's give him something are you seeing that and then you now pick somebody just because he's old he's the elder in charge of marriage counseling you have never supervised what he's teaching the young people and they come around and he's teaching nonsense do you think all this idea of beating wife do you think people just invented it someone advised somebody and say i did it it worked do it it works let's return jesus to our lives so let's return jesus to our lives you know what i'm saying is not a lie give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late the lord so please if you are here today at the end of the service i'll make an altar call
please i want you to examine your concept of born again if you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom you need jesus please let's not argue this thing this night you need jesus i don't care whether you are praying in tongues no sir are we together then your life then your home if my shirt has palm oil you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and i hold you there if you leave won't you see some stain something show me what implicates you and shows us you have met jesus don't just say you met jesus the bible says in the book of acts in the jerusalem council when they saw peter they saw these guys they knew they were timid but they knew they had been with jesus they saw them when they were timid but now they had seen them men of conviction let's sit down and continue an encounter with jesus number one number two now that we have cleared the way i want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that i want to bring is really where the anointing is this night so what you have even received now is an appetizer here comes the main course may you eat it every part of it in jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your god-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 I like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became uh-huh because he prepared his ways before the lord what was the secret of his exploits what was the secret of his might he prepared his way and he did that in the presence of god under his supervision preparation there is power in preparation write it down there is power in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove i'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove i'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom I call them the mysteries of the kingdom that's what you do during times of preparation your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom God has called me into an extraordinary ministry God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry God has told me I'm going to the nations every time in my dream I see myself changing people thank you man of God but what are you doing about it oh I'm already buying suits I, I, God has even shown me who my wife will be that's not preparation you are, that's carelessness I, I assure you you will not arrive that way preparation this great ministry that God is giving me what will it take what do i know do i understand administration do i understand finances this great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing have i understood the mysteries listen i want you to put your life on a project find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them find out 
there are many tools we need you need the anointing in the place of destiny have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life number two you need access to revelation the working knowledge of the word of god what keys do you have in your hand show me the keys you are accessing and i'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow finances our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benny Hinn came around Nigeria. And you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce make no mistakes about it do you know why many people do not rise we are comfortable with average average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you reward is for those who are distinguished not those who are present <laughs> is god speaking to someone there is power in preparation let me tell you when i started out in ministry I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. That time, ask Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag. Remember my black bag? It had Bible. It had my books. The books, the speakings of God to my life. I would always walk with it. Those were the times you see people who buy tape or they go tape maybe pastor chris any other tape and they are small rechargeable they will raise all their money and buy rechargeable not not many of us seated here you do not have any device for hearing the word of god you don't but you have clothes you are a young lady of 19 20 you have clothes of a married woman of 35 it's not wise it's, it's a terrible it's an extended version of foolishness Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one. Uh, prophet, uh, apostle, I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you have you seen that kind of thing where people kings come and sit down they say somebody dies you don't sit down and sit unprepared sir no preparation 
I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach? That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come, you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and work on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it someone asked me a question i think i don't know if it was a year or two ago and said apostle what are you doing with your life now i told him i said i am preparing for an extraordinary life he said preparing i said exactly uh, you think this thing i'm doing is ministry this is industrial attachment my goodness my goodness my goodness this is not close to what i've seen in the visions of the lord it doesn't even look like it compared to the koinonia god showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life Affect my life. We don't I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library, and I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important, they are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper, you are buying a man's pain. You are, you are, you are, you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind shadow why should you be roaming up and down in broad daylight you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane gisting and then they come to someone else's house how are you i was just strolling are you free and then they are offended when you say you are not free everybody say I'm going somewhere say it I'm going somewhere and now is the season of preparation I will prepare you want to be a millionaire let me see the preparation let me see the preparation show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth you want to be an extraordinary leader show me those you are receiving mentorship from. you are moving around not doing anything ladies hear me don't be under pressure the next thing in your life after school is not just marriage thank God for marriage but build yourself focus on preparation than manifestation you are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. 
Adapa. Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Walk on my character. Let me become an exceptional man of God. Lord, at this small level of ministry, they are already criticizing me. I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye. Lord, build me. You have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth. Can I survive the criticism that takes that, that having that kind of anointing will bring. Don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they taught something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people. You want to die? Ask Moses. Moses, the meekest man on earth. He was angry and about to kill himself. God said, calm down. That's how ministry is. Have you ever gone to God for prayer? And God said, no, that's how it is. So I hope you know that. That there is no breakthrough for this prayer is how it works hallelujah i have a very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade. I, after the prayer, fasting, visions, everything, he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with. He couldn't even start. I told him, I said, well, these are the logistics that are part of ministry. And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind, I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerate. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. A time will come, they look at you. And they say, you claim to be a man of God's wife. Look at your husband, his mouth is looking dry. You are not feeding him. And you say, Abba, husband, am I not feeding you? You didn't prepare. Because if you prepared, you would have studied other men of God's wife. And they would have told you this thing is normal. So as they are insulting you, you just say, oh, so that's how it is. Your spirit has been prepared. Anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing. You will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They said they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, Do you know Apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power? And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, Apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name. And then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or seven, But now, oh, come on. Prophesy to yourself. Say, myself, grow up. Say it, myself, grow up. There are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared. You are not the first to be criticized. Are we together? You are not the first to go through challenges. You are not the first to go through disappointment. It's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases. So you don't have a basis for comfort. God is speaking to someone tonight. Preparation. Some of us are confused where we are now. You don't know whether to start a church. You don't know whether to start a prayer group. You are not the first to start ministry. Go and examine the top 20 ministries. How did they start? There was a day it was in their mind. Did they start a church service? Bishop Oyedeko did not want to start a church. Because at that time, there were already too many churches based on him. So your confusion about should I start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking. You are not the first to think like that. 
when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, is it this mountain? I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh, man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I am compl complaining. In 91, we are owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed. Nothing is as bad as it is. And then you conquer that. I remember when one time um, we held a little program and I was going 30,000. 30,000. I was sweating. I didn't know what to do with my life. 30,000. It was from one book money somebody loaned us. It was so terrible. I remember the day. It was even late Dr. Bimbo Dukoya's books when they brought her to Zaria 2005. After organizing the program, now very nicely, his presence in worship. Are we together now? There was no, I mean, the whole thing. And they needed the money by 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. By 7 o'clock, I'm not sure I had on to 500. I was sweating around. I didn't know what to do. So now... You are owing 8,000 and you are moving around. My blood, I, I think I'm having high blood pressure. Calm down. Calm down. There is something preparation will teach you. That you stand up and walk. God is speaking to someone. It is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10. Find out what they did to come out. Preparation. And Dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say, ah, my budget is 1.5. Eh? Dr. Jenner, 1.5. You are seeing a man with two children, you will not ask questions. Sir, two children means you married. What happened? What did you do? You know, see, it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody. It's pride. What is a mountain to you is a valley to someone. You are not the first to have carryover. Hey, will I stay or will they drive me? Please go to bed. There are people who have taught this land you are seeing. Left, right and center. To a point that they just look at the board and say, glory be to God. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear is as a result of ignorance. And it's partly a product of not preparing. You have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others. Somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today. Because if you buy their materials and study their lives, you will learn their pain. Koinonia was not built in a day. Many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care. All you know is that you are enjoying, there will be workers' dinner. And it's free, paid for. Just dress well and come. I say, I like going on. I like a ministry that takes care of us like this. There was a story. There was a story behind it. Preparation. You learn the principles of the kingdom. Preparation. That's the time of trial and error. Please hear me. That's the time when you are, you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom. Like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door. You will use wrong keys. You will use wrong keys. It's in the place of preparation. You will know how the anointing works. So God will keep building you. You will read the books. You will listen to the messages. Then one day, you and God will go on small IT. Somebody will now say, please, Pastor Femi, can you just pray for our little group? And he say, ah, me? I mean, you are even calling me pastor. And then on that day, you will pray. Some things will happen. Others will not happen. You will first go with confidence. You are fasted dry. It's even dry you went for the meeting. And then you go there. Before you start preaching, somebody is already shouting. And you're like, eh? That means this thing is easy. Then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall. And you're saying, what's the confusion? I didn't lay hands on anybody. Somebody was shouting. The ones are now in direct contact with the anointing. So, preparation. You now go back. In one message you are hearing, you will hear a mystery 
that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah, should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is God speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife she will now say God told me when God told me my husband did not yet know and God was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the Holy Spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah Auntie Shade please can I come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother god has been speaking you are not seeing me you will never see you because god is not a wicked god to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands i respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them their prayer life fire their word like fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet god is preparing them one day you'll just see god will carry one brother and give them and say, ah where is this one coming from are you joking nobody comes from nowhere people are preparing quietly you are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing but you are not prepared I receive grace to prepare lift your voice and pray i receive grace lord i see how i've been shortchanging myself i've been acting like i've arrived i've been trying to look rich i've been trying to look anointed by this teaching tonight oh god i receive grace grace koinonia pray i stop complaining about what is not working i value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me and I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke prons kebariata lakoto supahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text. And the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God. God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things. But I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, you're a good husband. You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week, and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. 
your little fellowship in one state somewhere maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you yet people like dr paul and running six services every sunday two services every week intermittently they can travel to europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system there is a system otherwise it will kill you john g lake did not understand that he did well in ministry and died in his family life what is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say yes I'm coming to your church yes I'm coming to your fellowship I will not even remember I found out that I had to prepare four five messages in a week it was weighing me down I said it's not like I don't have what to say but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say I can preach any nice sermon but will it be effective are we together what do you not know I'm drawing you to a point your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere then i began to study i got bishop oedeko's books towards excellence in life and ministry i got that what that Hayward mills book church administration and management i got some of the just books pastoring without tears i got some of these materials and sat down when i began to study i said ah so this is how it works i've been killing myself for no reason are we together killing myself for no reason i remember when i had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call it was like i'm a receptionist somebody will call and say is this apostle i just want to know and for five minutes you are arguing with the person is this apostle if it's not apostle please don't waste my time and it's my credit too. i'm now calling i say it's apostle say, to apostle please do you have time because what i'm about to tell you is is boiling in my spirit and i will now carry my big head and say yes i have time and for 30 minutes while you are talking another text is entering another call and i find out that sometimes you can stay three hours you are just answering call and you are fagged out you are fatigued someone who finishes work he will walk well have a nice time with his wife go to church and come back then call you that's when you now want to rest then others started calling by one or two because they found out that i don't sleep in the night they will now call and say apostle sorry you they just go ahead i used to feel so guilty if i'm sleeping and my phone is ringing i feel so bad until i read a man of god's book that delivered me now it can ring if it's an emergency call the police yeah People would threaten me and say, man of God, pride, pride. You've not gotten anywhere. You used to respond to us before. You even used to send us recharge card. But now you are, you are getting arrogant. I will feel so bad. I'll say, but God, please search my heart. Until I found out that that's how people are. It's not like they are just becoming it for me. They are like that everywhere. I just said, ah, please go to bed. Ah, somebody's already gaining wisdom. gaining wisdom so when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing you say why does everybody hate me no you are not the only one it's like that you are just discovering it you are just discovering it i don't know why everybody talks about me everybody is there something wrong ah if if you are looking at your legs you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk ah god is giving us wisdom preparation 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 there are some of us married people people come to your house you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything because let, let them not say we are not good let them say who let them say because you will find lousy people they'll come to your house is there pepper soup in this house you will think they are joking they really mean it you will rush go to the market buy, buy cow you think it's just a joke you are not learning to grow up you need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, oh, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book. 
that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said please visitor we have we have a program in this house there are times we have bible study there are times i'm just spending time with my wife there are times we are spending time with the children it is important to let us know you are coming man said what is there what do you think you are leave him let him go carry his trouble and go at least you are free now there is something you need to know to set you free most of this depression we are having is because there's something you don't know so you sit down there and think people are talking about you what will they be saying about me what wouldn't they say do well they will talk don't do well they will talk so be used to it and enjoy your life you see what preparation does for you so you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you and you become a motivated leader and everybody looks at you and says wow this guy is a leader worthy of emulation then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence say amen you have to learn the principles of the kingdom very quickly there are four areas still under the second point there are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom generally. As regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. You need it. Study on finances. Don't just be a money monger. Don't just be a hustler. Don't just be obsessed about money and business. Understand the system. Understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of god you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people 
people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action i don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah oh god no 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 who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's god and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that god gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you god has called you and god has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there, there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as god is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed god is lifting you god is bringing people into your life most of the people god is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together god never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying 
and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with Jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with Jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the Bible says they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our God he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what I'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what I'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man not just because I think I am good I have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man. Not just because I hate poverty. I've studied the system. I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed. Not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself. No, 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 no. I've understood the system. At that point, you can look at life and smile. It's called mastery. You can rise to a point where you look at life and smile. And know that I have a great destiny. I have a great destiny. And you look at your life after 20, 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact. On Eagle's Wings, a book written by Bishop David Oedipo, I think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of Living Faith then or so, I looked at everything, the progression on how he started and I said, this is it. Consistent. I have studied many great men of God. That's how they started. Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted. They prayed. They met together as leaders. They readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Iya Deboe, there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and God told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures it could not go beyond the south and he went to the Lord and then the Lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that. And then you see another redeemed branch, youthful, another redeemed branch, still, you know, holding on to certain values. He just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it. But then gave the flexibility and now redeemed this everywhere. Festival of Life in the UK. It's as if, I mean, you see them everywhere there. France, everywhere redeemed because of that secret. 
you can now look at that why is my church not growing ah and god opens your eyes through that light and you now see it oh the reason why my church is not growing is because um i i i hold on to my values but probably i i impose every value both spiritual cultural sociological on people and that value is restraining people that may be just the key you need to adjust and then all of a sudden you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people action action god is challenging some of us to take action you need to take action over your finances you need to take action there are different action steps you can take you can begin to read books every day you can listen to messages every day you can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship as much as god grants you grace you may need to settle down tell yourself i'm starting that business next month i'm starting it i have prepared i have paid my price i am starting it i will start it or you can say this month of november is dedicated to scattering my cvs around i will anoint it i will pray i brought it for miracle service they have prayed for it now god is waiting on me i will scatter it all around hallelujah action we are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action we are enjoying what god has done today because of the power of action listen when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise whether or not you move time is moving whether or not you move time is moving it is important to move with it time is premium the only way to redeem it is to use it well you don't save time you use it well you redeem it by investing properly in it koinonia i bring you a word today there is a prophetic destiny for you in christ you have been escorting men some of you after tonight you've got to sit down brothers look at me after tonight some of you when you go back home don't sleep you need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am i doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come god will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible it's time for you to begin to study the bible you want to become a great man of god you don't know the bible you're going to crash land you will be tired your members will be weary they will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word you are not instant in season he tapped elijah and said eat for the journey is far." i want to round up are you preparing are you preparing for your life sister are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage brother do you want to marry by fire by force or are you preparing marriage means a wife marriage means children marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws have you positioned your spirit to manage it marriage means leadership i want to start a business ceo ceo of what have you studied it i want to become a great man of god i want to be president and founder or geo all that one is stories uneasy lies the head that wears the crown are we together listen I made a decision years ago today now makes it um, not today but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I've been working with God I've been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today 
is a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost. There were many other things that had happened before that time. But I made up my mind. I said from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing, redeem the time. Please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense. Early in the morning, you are supposed to be praying. Six o'clock, they are in your house because you stay in the same compound. Bros, how are you day? Then please, please, what, what is that shout? Please, I'm happy. Today is a glorious day. Take it easy. Bros, you don't cook. You don't do this. Just speaking, tell him, please, I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these, your vulgar statements and the rest, I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. You behave. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh-uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000. 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Nature. 500 naira. 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. You can budget for it. One good suit. So that the day God opens a door, you have something nice keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no, no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you i see you you are still acting like children although you are matured You begin to act responsibly. You see someone's child falling down, you create a sense of responsibility. Oh, let me help this person. You are taking action that is opening doors for you. You see a man that is anointed, you don't just stand. Let's see what he's saying. Pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say? No. The law of honor. See, there is a way you look at someone, you know he has grown up. You know he has grown up. Are we together? Let's take steps for our destiny. You may not like what I'm teaching you tonight, but just like others who are saying thank you now, you will say thank you tomorrow. I guarantee you. You may not like me for what I'm teaching you now, because for some of you, I'm challenging you. Listen, there are some of you, especially ladies, because you are very beautiful. Your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you. So there's nobody to really tell you the truth. My name is Joshua Selman. I'm telling you, you have to settle down and be serious with your life. You cannot float around a destiny full of flattery. Somebody has got to tell you this is wrong, this is right. The person who challenges you is the person who loves you. 
God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these this irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, ah, apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil. You say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Say it again from today. I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes and then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that. Show me your association and I show you your true values. Show me your association. Whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, he was your chief, um, 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 your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Service, love you guys. What is the chief bridesmaid? Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts. Especially for us ladies. Especially for us ladies. You love God, but the moment you meet them, they come with their wrong ideologies. And then they force you to have to believe it. You just came back from church and now you are making up your mind, I will be responsible. And someone goes, hey, geez, they, oh, ladies, can I sit down? You know that's what you just repented of. But because of the presence of that friend, you say, Todd, just tell me. And you now keep listening. Before you know it, you go back to your vomit again. May God deliver you this night. The courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny. See, I don't know what is it. This our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way. If I tell this person, sorry, you are interrupting my destiny, they will feel bad. They will criticize me. So what? So what? Make up your mind. Are we together? Make up your mind. This night, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, make up your mind and say things will change. I pray that you will really change. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will really change. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many other things we need to change about. Some of you have up to 20 relationships. Consciously, you don't care. To you, it's a symbol that you are a fine girl. Say, do you know all these guys are dying? I guarantee you, none of them will marry you. For you to be that careless with your life, they will ask you out. But when they are ready to marry, they will come to church. The brother will repent and dress well. And come and look for a quiet lady who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe. 
they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow and by that time they will not be ready to marry you they will marry people younger than you don't be angry i'm sorry i'm saying this but i'm challenging you and brothers don't think what i've said now is a license for you to be foolish because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life please don't don't ever use what i'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady if you don't merit saying any no um they will bring you to me you are going to meet me somewhere in the equation i will meet and i will tell you no no you are not you are not responsible enough it's as simple as that she may not have the courage to tell you but i guarantee you i will tell you you know why i'm doing this to you tonight i came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because i i want to challenge you you're on your way to better days you're on your way to better days every marriage you see here by god's grace some of our people here who are gloriously married there were steps they took some of the things you are seeing here the lives that are successful in ministry by god's grace you belong to a ministry that god has helped these are the things that we do they are not what we are saying they are things that we do he said that which you have seen me do among many witnesses do also do also be serious with your life i can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping sleeping snoring any time of the day I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. 5 verse 1 of Joshua. Open our eyes, O oh God. And let men and women walk away from their chains forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. From their chains forever. Five verse one, and it came to pass. It will be a fast reading. When all the kings of the Amorites who were on the side of Jordan, westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Now watch this. They were about to challenge Jericho. And when the other kings heard of the mighty things that God did, the kings tried to decipher what is it about Israel that makes them always win battles? What is it that makes them, whether you have a greater armory than them, is insignificant. They will throw you down. There was a mystery of dominion they were working with. And God was about to introduce Joshua. Joshua was just a young ruler taking over from Moses. And this is what he told him. Let's see the mystery. Let's take chapter 5 verse 2. 5 verse 2. Are you there? Now let's look at it. It says, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Do what? He said, Make sharp knives. He's about to teach him how to continue in the steps of Moses make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of israel the second time let's continue three and joshua made sharp knives and circumcised all the children at the heel of the four skins and then and this is the reason why he circumcised them all the people that came out of egypt were males even all the men of war they died in the wilderness after they came out of egypt five now all the people that came out were circumcised but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way when they came forth out of egypt were not circumcised are you seeing that now all those who had been winning and making israel make progress it was because they were circumcised but he said these guys are not circumcised and if you don't circumcise them something dangerous is about to happen to you verse 6 It says for the children of israel walked 40 years in the wilderness and all of that and all of that let's go to verse 7 and their children whom he raised up in their stead them joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised 
because they had not circumcised them by the way verse 8 watch this and it came to pass when they were done circumcising all the people they abode in their places watch this joshua is afraid of conquering jericho and the walls that are before him and god said no problem heaven wants to come into your affairs but you need to authorize them he says circumcise the people the moment the circumcision finished verse 9 let's see what happened and the lord said to joshua this day i have what rolled away the reproach of egypt my goodness so all the while they were carrying the reproach because they were not circumcised he said the moment a circumcision a separation a cutting away happened he said this day i have rolled away the reproach of egypt from you wherefore the name of the place to this day is called gilgal go to verse 13 let's see something mysterious that happened verse 13 everyone look up and it came to pass listen joshua was by jericho that he lifted up his eyes immediately after circumcision he saw a strange man who came and said i'm ready to partner with you you have invited the realm of the spirit into your affair that man had been there all the while but there was no access he said you need help you can't conquer jericho by your strength the realm of the spirit wants to partner with you but the secret is the circumcision the moment it happened the bible says he lifted up his eyes and he saw a man with a sword and he went to him and said are you for us or against us next verse and he said nay but i come i'm also a warrior but i fight in the spirit the same way you guys are warriors i am also a captain i lead a battalion i help men on earth who invite us to come you are seated on the throne and he said and joshua fell on his face and did worship and he said unto him what saith my lord to his servant next verse watch this and the captain of the lord's host said unto joshua lose thy shoe from off your foot from the place you stand this holy ground and joshua did so next verse now jericho was straightly short watch this let me just save our time are you noticing what is happening here immediately after the circumcision he saw the captain then the captain started revealing to him the strategy this is how you will take jericho otherwise they would have died there because physically speaking jericho was insurmountable now watch this your tithe in the spirit is similar to this spiritual circumcision your tithe is an authorization for the realm of the spirit to come into your affairs and partner with you this is the reason why even human beings for men men because men are the carriers of the seed men are instructed to be circumcised why not sir? how can a man come from heaven we believe children are the heritage of the lord but you will give birth to a man and he will still go to circumcision are you getting the point now because the moment circumcision happens the realm of the spirit comes come come watch this you are on your own minding your business trying to win the war of life by yourself and god is saying you are doing this thing sensually you are doing this thing carnally you never will be able to do it it says honor me with your tithe and the moment that happens there is already a spiritual arsenal that comes to work with you and that which you have becomes supernatural not just natural not just natural it becomes supernatural the reason why there is a crowd of people inside and outside look at this right to the road right everywhere let me tell you the reason why it is not just because this is a great ministry it is because we have beckoned on the assistance of the supernatural there are some people standing outside who are even shocked that they are here when you see them you imagine 
there is no amount of invitation he would have given them to come but for the realm of the spirit he said i am come as a captain in other words the same way you fight there are spiritual arsenals to wait in you have been trying to fight every battle in your life just by using physical arsenals and the lord is saying the earth is fighting you when you return my designated portion you authorize the realm of the spirit to begin to help you this ministry by the grace of god we are faithful never for any reason and by any means under the sun will we touch god's portion not out of fear but out of revelation my life as a person god is my witness that i honor him and that portion that belongs to him this is why i'm dangerously protected it's not about a man no 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 dangerously protected i share with you a simple but powerful mystery when pastor jakes was sharing and he said they picked somebody from his position and makes him a deputy manager deputy manager with interviews on phone you went to school and you are intelligent is that how it is done let me tell you the blessing breaks the rules for you it breaks the rules for you yes when men say it cannot be done it breaks the rules the problem is that we are too carnal we have intellectualized life life is spiritual say it after me one more time shout it like you believe it life is spiritual all that you see is not all that there is those who are controlling this world are those who have an advantage of the spirit you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne tonight God is asking you are you ready to stop struggling in life let me tell you struggling is a cause if you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle I am telling you now struggling is a cause it's a cause from the pit of hell you will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money because money is not missing you were never supposed to look for it hallelujah you will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things trying to look for earthly relevance there are people who want to build a house but they want to build it physically by putting blocks you will die trying to build that house because there is a spiritual dimension to everything give us James chapter 2 verse 26 I hope we'll be able to find it I'm reserving it for next week by the way next week Friday here is going to be a powerful vigil hallelujah yes next week is going to be a vigil it's going to be a time of prayer and worship we're inviting guests from all over now watch this the Lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life I shared it in Abuja I was reserving it to start the teaching next week but your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's let's touch it a bit paul watch this oh, sorry james the apostle james was teaching on faith and works corresponding action is that true and while he was teaching on faith and works he just feared off and brought a powerful principle in an attempt to explain faith and work he, comp he, he compares it with something he says for as the body without what a spirit now all of you watch this guy the only reason that i can interact with him is because there is a spirit is that true if the spirit leaves this body what happens i will reject the body all of you will reject the body are you getting me and we will have to bury him because it is a body though complete it has no spirit are you getting me now i want you media please keep it there keep it there so that we'll 
I want you to remove the word us and just read just the first line to the comma. Are you ready? One to read. One more time. One more time. For the body without the spirit is dead. It didn't say for the body of man. For any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it, it is dead. For any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead. For any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body. It says for a body without a spirit. So the nation of Israel was like a body without a spirit. And he said, Joshua, you will lose. You need the spirit component. And circumcision authorized the spirit. When the realm of the spirit came, they said, let's go. We can take Jericho. And with one shout, this was what David knew. That as big as Goliath was, he was a body without a spirit. The other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm. Ah, Goliath was shouting and David looked at him. He said, I see a body, but there is no covenant, no spirit. What is the force in the spirit backing you? And Goliath said, am I a dog? Even if you fight me, honor me. And David said, you are joking. You don't know who is talking. I'm not alone. I, I, you are an uncircumcised. See the word again. See the word again. You are an uncircumcised I would have been afraid of you. I would have considered your threat if you were circumcised. Where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit? And he said, I'm circumcised. I may be weak, but there is a government that backs me. When you get this key, my brother, you will run as if Satan does not exist. I promise you I promise you this you can jump around for deliverance you can hop from everywhere but the body without a spirit is dead so your boss in the office knows this and there is a spirit that backs his chair you just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair. It's a throne. There are spirits back in it. That's why the Bible says, they that knew their God, they that have connected with a spiritual advantage, they shall be strong. Shall do exploits. Rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you. And your life will be nothing short of a wonder. How many people, listen, I have given up on trying to do things by my strength. Because I know I'm wasting my time. The body. In the same way, the next time somebody stands and threatens you, that is a body without a spirit. See, no matter what talk people talk, I only consider you if you are connected spiritually. Are you getting what I'm saying? I will deal with you. The body without the spirit is dead. I will make sure you leave this job. The body without the spirit is dead. You only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance, whether demonic or whatever. Are you getting me? circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down 
I smile around the stage. I would have died of hypertension if I'm responsible for your healing. But we have made arrangement already. We are covered. Oh yes, absolutely. We are covered. Heaven is jealous. You know? Jealous to protect his own. Because God's designated portion. Listen. When you steal your tithe, you have not only destroyed your destiny, you have stolen from your children. Every time you don't tithe, just know that your firstborn is in trouble. If you don't do it again, you are affecting your children. Because he said, I will pour you a blessing, you will not have room. In other words, no matter how greedy you are, your lifetime cannot exhaust it. So when you steal, you have endangered the destiny of your children. God's portion. If anyone ever told you tithing is all about money, that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong. Tithing has nothing to do with money. It's the law of open heavens. Let me surprise you. If your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000, you are operating under a closed heaven. Don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million, the heavens is open. It is called due process. I'll teach you next week. There is a protocol to spiritual things. Are you getting my point? Tithing is what opens your heavens. And then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper. If you like, carry 1 billion. Give charity organization. Give for the building of church. If you are not a tighter, I guarantee you, the Bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron. All of them are conductors of heat. Get set for heat in your life. When the heaven is open, if, not, if for nothing we know there is ventilation, fresh air, the wind comes. But when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron, many of us here, no matter what prayer happens in this, that's why we took the communion. The devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised. The devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. Even Jesus Christ acknowledged them. That's why he said he is the head of principalities. It destroys men's lives on legal basis. This earth is too wicked for you to allow chance. No. I pray for people all the time. People with cancers, HIV, tuberculosis, communicable diseases. Imagine if I refuse to be faithful. I would die like a chicken because most times I lay hands on people and there are medical doctors here. They know that some of these things are physically not healthy. But I'm circumcised. My goodness. You invoke my name in a shrine, both the invoker, the invokee, and the ordinance, it, they will burn to ashes. Ashes! No matter how mad a man is, he doesn't enter fire by mistake. He can cross the road and you say he's a madman, but when he sees fire, he fears off. When heaven backs you, let me tell you, your life becomes a wonder even to you. This ministry is a wonder to everyone. Not just because we are so smart. We are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit. Because by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, spirit of the deep, cry out, God, oh, you are mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne, you 
You are mighty on the other road. 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 You are mighty in this place. 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 You are mighty in my life. 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister. You are mighty in this place. They that are with us are greater, greater, greater. Mantos Kalabandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy. Where I have allowed the devourer, I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I have allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside. Lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. Listen, I give you an assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this. If you take what I've shared tonight 
for many of you this is your secret is your password to a mysterious level of lifting a level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night lift your voice it's the seventh month the gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 add one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away that terminal disease must die today that cancer must die today that HIV must go today that barrenness must go today that stagnation must go today Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 o
Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. Are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow, we just move and we don't stop. So you have one minute while you are praying in tongues. Just write your prayer request very quickly so that when it's time to pass it, you just pass it very fast. Manta la dosa so predishi la koria da balarabas. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. Oh, 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 this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit. Lord, that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to begin to minister to us. And while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again I kept seeing please pay attention can I have strings 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 string, string. hallelujah I kept seeing again and again spirits watch this spirits leeching onto people this is what I kept seeing like a man sitting on a man's shoulder I saw this over many people and I said Lord what is the meaning of this and the Lord began to to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families and the Lord said when I come up he said the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers dislodge those powers I saw them like a man like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another bringing a resistance to your destiny and I'm about to pray for you right now there are so many people under the sound of my voice so many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands, everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone, um, uh, 
suffering from severe migraine but then that migraine you think is just sickness we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of david it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah i'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name jesus my goodness i sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of god will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of god especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you jesus father in the name of your son i pray right now and i sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost that the fire of the spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch i pray that by this shout oh god there be a visitation that by this shout oh god everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft. I cause witchcraft. I cause witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we are going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire physically physically right now in the name of jesus one two three jesus! oh yes that fire that fire that fire of the holy ghost brings deliverance outside 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 miracles are Mighty deliverances by the power of the Holy Ghost. You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. Hey, para tototos. Breketes kata. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies. Ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire. Oh God, locate them. Right now, right now, right now, I cost that spirit. I cost that spirit. Ladies, ladies, a miracle is happening to sisters. I cost those spirits. I cost those spirits. Outside, the 
I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. please lift your hands lift your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of jesus families i see altars on fire are you ready now father any family under the yoke of bondage as they shout this name let there be a visitation one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands i'm hearing marital spells 
marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen, hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages, whether single or married. Right now, lift your hands. As I begin to speak, the wind, I see like a wind, a whirlwind moving across this auditorium. Oh. It will catch up with some people right now. Where are they, oh God? Visit them right now. In the name of Jesus. One more time, we will shout that name. Wherever they are. One, two, three. Jesus! I'm hearing a name, Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not busy, Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying, She's where is she? Mina, Niger State. She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, it's sir. even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where 
Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you, yourself, otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship. But hold my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring rest to this lady. Bring rest to her in the name of Jesus Christ. Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage? There is a woman that had a miscarriage. And the Lord is asking me to minister to her. We may not be able to minister to everybody, but there is, there is someone. Please make sure you don't sit back. The Lord is ministering to me about that person. So that we'll just, we'll just pray for her. Dogara. Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You? Your name is Dogara? Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home. In Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never. If they are vomiting anything, please and please maybe carry them out. Of We're about to pray, please. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident. In the name of Jesus, it will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come, there's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family. Because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage. Yes, sir. Because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. And that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay, you understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand I'll pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I'm I curse that spirit. You must release her right now. In the name that is above all names. There is no hiding place. The light of God is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is no hiding place for you. By the blood of Jesus Christ. You must release this woman. It's a spirit of death. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. 
let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Now all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want, to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of them now. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord. Live your life, live your destiny. Restoration of virtue, of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me. Rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. You, come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah, come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it. And you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny and the lord is saying i should tell you he's rolling away the reproach from your life in the name of jesus lift your hands and let's release miracle job if you don't believe in it put down your hand command you by the blood of Jesus you foul spirit you have oppressed this body in the name of Jesus I break your covenant I break your ordinance there is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady it's not just her can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady I curse you now I curse you I curse you by the God of heaven and I curse you by my office in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we are playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical, yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. 
I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you I compel them to call your loved ones I compel them to favor you here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg mysteriously paining you, and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. Where is it? Which of the legs? Look what? Look, if if the devil, you remember I told you this a body without the spirit. Look what is happening to this girl. And then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife. Are you seeing that? Is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it will do to someone's destiny i say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that god is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of god in our churches and stop playing games with god because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, no, no. Don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see you too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick. Then we let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you who had a dream, in a dream is like something was shot. It's like I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream, and something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. 
it's like I don't know if it was like a gun or something or an uh, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was. It's like it was shot to your leg. Something beat me when I was sleeping. I just broke up and screamed. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to follow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot? Fired at you? Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You prayed when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God, and God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I cursed it. In Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in me. It's for me to stand or to walk. Almost two years. It's broken. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another? Or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you can't it? it huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his tie and came and out. Came out. The other this tie. is the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his tie up to the present. This guy Where is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos? Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate? Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hand. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cast this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I do. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have new pains. Since Me? I, yes, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, so I can't you... walk, since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now, I can't walk. I can walk and be hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen for five years. Five years? Where is which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand. I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two, two months. Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis. Yes. Who else? Who again? Leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is leg, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. 
for five years. I'm seeing a spirit. Go. Go. In the name of Jesus. You can't remain in her. The swollen legs. I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and strengthen. The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. matter what is wrong with you just a laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities Name of Jesus Christ. Holy, holy, holy. 
holy, 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 holy. of this brother the legs look at me leave him remove your hand from him look at me have you tried walking before huh? lift your leg try lift it lift it lift the other one lift it lift it You are mighty Look at me. Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come. 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 Just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. Come. Come, come on, you celebrate Jesus. You are mighty Jesus. on your throne. Completely, the legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
Please, those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead. Shibarato soto Go ahead. Stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater. Our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katamaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray pray from the depth of your heart There be testimonies in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations into testimonies. Lord, we agree, we agree, we agree in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations to testimonies. Stretch your hands and keep receiving. I receive by faith. Come on, pray. All kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of jesus we pray for contract that long delayed lord we pray that lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints lord in the name of jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of god call come on cold altars in the name of jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us lord we give you praise blessed father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the lord jesus christ it's by the anointing it's not by english burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what i'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where i begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. hallelujah hallelujah keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory sing hallelujah hallelujah Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. So so deep with you. Hey, so so deep with you. We give you the praise. So so deep with 
every one of you for coming out this is the way to the cross listen no matter what you achieve in life if your eternal destiny is not secured it says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life but he said this life is in his son until you have the son you do not have that life lift your right hand forget about who is looking at you and in the name of Jesus I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you are not reciting a poem it's not a special number this is a decision there's one of you here you smoke all these kinds of things Igbo and the rest huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you will catch up with us in this prophetic session I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentlemen now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy work in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time i know you are trying as ushers just stand around satan does not have authority i want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded 
You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. Seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the ministry of angels, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation. I pray for you. Every weakness in your life, Shabbatalakata. That weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus. Every weakness in your life, that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year an anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every student here oh for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding I'm praying for you some of you listen as I pray now some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head it's an impartation of knowledge right now oh God I release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy I command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day I speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire hundred people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor favor favor
everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level I don't care where they are but I sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we are entering called August may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions Shakataba. lift your hands there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light I pray for you 
whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here it's time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine lift your hands one last prayer listen i want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established i pray for you in the name of the lord jesus christ that the lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as i speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 Prophecy, 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 prophecy. I activate the prophetic. I open your eyes. Spiritual gifts, endowments of the spirit. I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow i prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring into your life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him praise. Father, we give you all the praise. I assure you you will know that this miracle service was unusual you will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls i mean connections mysterious happenings I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of Jesus I command that every gate that has been closed the Bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you command the earth to work for you 
I command the wind to walk for you. I command the stars to walk for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing, everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for Koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done for us as a house? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Kateka Kos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.